Amen. Let's give a hand to the Lord and welcome Pastor Manoha. And we have Sister Viji also with us. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Happy to be in the house of the Lord and with the family in Abu Dhabi. And you know what? This, if we take this ratio of uh, 100 people joining the Bible uh, course and only 25 finishing it, what if it happens in the church? Out of 100, only 25 go to heaven? Can that happen? <coughs> Think about it. Why some of those people backed out? I want to say something, it's not part of preaching. Today morning, uh, a well-known great man died, Nelson Mandela. We call him great because he left an impact in his own country and throughout the world. I know he used to read the Bible and how strong Christian he was, I do not know, but then he used to read the Bible. That was his strength while he was in the prison. And uh, why or how could he do what he did? He was persistent, 27 or 28 years in the prison. Huh? Uh, total 27, I think, 27 or 28 and able to, still able to achieve what he wanted to achieve. What was it? One thing is persistence. He was after it. And why our dear two sisters were able to have completed, they were persistent in what they wanted to do. I'm talking to you so that this will put a thought in your heart. How persistent are you in your walk with God? If you are not persistent, you know, the word of God says many have started, but they have not finished. Many came out of Egypt. Out of them, all of them died. They were left, but they could not enter the promised land, except two. Just two. From the day when they started off, only two were left. And some people don't like to talk about fearful things. The world is afraid to speak about things like God can punish, God is, God will not answer prayer, God take, takes away things. When you sing this song, He gives and takes away lots of people. Somebody even in our own church said, No, we should not say that verse, do not sing. Not knowing that's the word of God. God can do it if He wants to. It's not that He doesn't do it. We have to be extremely careful in our walk with God. I'm going to go to the word of God, but then I had to say these words. I just want to say a word of prayer together. Let's focus on the Lord for a few minutes. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father God. Oh, we worship you. You alone deserve glory, honor, and praise. You alone are worthy to be exalted, Master God. Lord, we can thank one time, two times. Hundred times or even thousand times is still not enough for what you have given to us. What you have done in our lives, oh Father God. Lord, yes, we began thanking this day, Father God. Yes, if, yet, Lord, we cannot surprise you because you know everything that we are going to do already according to word, Father God. Yes, you are looking for us to come and praise you and worship you and even thank you, Father God. Your word says, enter your gates with thanksgiving. Lord, we want to thank you one more time this evening for giving us this opportunity to be in your presence, Lord. Yes, Lord, in this world, many people are leaving and they are gone, Father God, but you kept us alive. But you kept us alive for with one purpose, that we may glorify you, Father God. That we may walk with you, Father God. That we may hear your voice, Father God. This evening, Father God, pour out your spirit upon us. That we will understand your plan and purpose for our lives, Father God. That we may walk in what you want us to walk in. Not in our own ways, not in our own thoughts, Father God. You have good plans for us, good thoughts for us, and we want to know them, Father. Speak to us today, Father God. You alone be glorified and be exalted. I surrender myself at your footstool, Lord. Lord, use me as your instrument. 
Lord, let your word come in its power and its glory and clarity. That it may, Master God, touch our hearts, change us, and transform us. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' most precious name, pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I just want to, again, even though I'll begin this preaching, but then I want to tell you, 11 months in 2013 have finished and we entered a new month. That's the last month of the year. Like many companies, many people take account of what happened in the whole year. And at the end of the year, some people have a different kind of financial years, they take an account of their status, whether it's business or whatsoever. Similarly, school children, they finish their academic year and an account is taken through exams, whether they can stand the exams, they can pass the exams and show whether they are successful for the work that they have done. Similarly, we ask God every year, God give us a promise and we try to get a promise from the Lord in various ways. And for the church, we bring a promise and as pastors, we deliver it to you. You know, I want to ask you today, year after year, a promise is given. Some of you enjoy it, whether you are excited about it, some of you have used the promises a place to anchor and get something by putting your faith in the promise because God's promises are always there. It's not only for the same year. But some of you have forgotten, maybe in the first month, second month, sometimes you're reminded and so on. My point here is, where have we reached in whole year? If you began with some, you know, solid decisions on the first or on the, on the first of the year or the first week of the year, I will do this for you, Lord, or I will grow in this manner. Where have you reached? Today our sister's success tells us they have reached something. They have learned the word of God. And that word can be used. Initially for their own life, as they mentioned to us, to bless themselves. And later on, they can share this word to somebody who are in need of that word. Today, we want to take an account of ourselves in this last month of this year. I may challenge you, or I will challenge you with some challenges. I always do not bring an exciting, you know, uh, encouraging word to you, because there are others who can do that. It's not that I don't want to. What I want to do is, not what I want to do, the word God gives me is to put you before the word and where you are in the word. Amen? So just listen to the word. Let's read from uh, Epistle of John, third Epistle of John. Third Epistle of John. Verse 2. It's a very famous word. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. I'm not talk, going to talk to you about prosperity. It says, Beloved, I pray you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. There are three, three things we can see here. Prosper in health. And prosper in all things. And prosper in soul. When it is soul, I want, to, I want you to make note of it. It's talking about spiritual prosperity. And in other words, I will say, as you, you have a spiritual prosperity, also prosper in all things. And also in your health. They cannot be separated. The world is always after material prosperity. They run after it. If we preach those kind of things, people come running to churches. The churches get filled. But God wants us to have the spiritual prosperity. And let's go on. And this through the scripture. We will try to go further. What we have to understand, when there is a spiritual growth, there is other growth too. 
And I want to talk to you about spiritual growth today. Let's call the title as the spiritual growth title for this message. And how we can compare it is, uh, let's take uh, Luke chapter 2 verse 40 about growth. Let's try to understand what it means to grow. Luke chapter 2 verse 40. And this is being talked about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ when he was a child. And it says, And the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and grace of God was upon him. The child grew. You, all of you are parents who have children. You expect your children to grow, isn't it? You don't want your child to be always in your arms, or you don't want your child to always, you know, go and drink only milk. You want them to crawl. You want them to stand up. You want them to walk. And you want them to run. And then you want them to rise higher and higher and taller. In the beginning, the parents want the later the children themselves want to grow taller. John wants to grow taller than his sister. He tells me. And all of them. I'm just saying this because he, he talks about. We want to go taller. He's talking about this. Let's go to the, another scripture in the same book. Verse 52. Luke chapter 2. Verse 52. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature. He's talking about stature means a physical increase. He grew up. And in favor with God and men. So as parents, we want our children to grow. God expects us to grow. And here we see in the manner which, in which Jesus grew. There are a few things that we can see here. In what he grew. He grew physically. When it said physical growth, we have to think about our old self. Not think about our physical growth. We can't keep growing beyond you know, six and seven feet. Some go seven and a half, probably. Uh, eight, some people in the world, if they're tallest. But what is talking, the physical growth, we're talking about a self-growth. Our whole self must grow in a day-to-day -day life. Then, becoming strong in the spirit. The word of God does not say about Jesus because he became strong in his body. He built his muscles and he was strong. He was, a, he was like Samson or so, not Pastor Samson. The Samson of the book and Judges. But he became strong in the spirit. Another, word, another thing it says is, he was filled with wisdom. I'm putting both the uh, scriptures together. Filled with wisdom. We need to be filled with wisdom too. And then, he was under the grace of God. And then later, he had favor with God. And he had favor with men. So the growth needs all these things in it. You have to have Yourself, you should grow in whole, in, in all in all, and become strong in the spirit. Spir there should be spiritual growth, and you should be filled with wisdom that comes from heaven. And you should grow in the grace of God. Grace of God is always there, but you should grow in receiving that grace and living by that grace. And then you should have favor with God. Simple. When you have faith in God, He likes it. Then you'll have His favor. But when you are growing in favor of God, when God's favor is all over you, when people can see the favor of God in your life, they begin to show their favor upon you. The reason is you are a changed person in God. You begin to exhibit God-like nature within yourself. And everybody in the world likes good people. They can be very bad, but they want everybody else before them good. Means good means loving, caring, talking good, talking truth, doing right things, humble, compassionate, all this good nature. All people like it, whether they have themselves or not. They, and when they say it in any person, they begin to like them. If you're honest in your workplace, your boss will like you. You're honest in everything. And with finances, you're, you're honest. You're working hours, you're honest. When you're giving your work, you do not steal the hours of work in your workplace. Your bosses will be 
happy with you and they will begin to show favor to you. So, when there is favor with God, automatically you begin to experience favor in the world from people. In the word of God, there is, in the book of Acts, uh, it says, people had favor, when the church, the church had favor with people. They actually feared them because the power of God was manifesting in the church. And then later, they begin to have favor upon them because they were manifesting God's love and God's power. So that they can see, they saw healings, they saw deliverances, so many miracles, signs and wonders. And that is the growth. Okay. So for a physical growth, what do we need? We need food, nourishing food. If a child has to grow, he needs nourishing food. And we need to have food which is appropriate for growth. Some food will make you fat. You may not grow. In other words, you keep uh, feeding a child lots of fatty food, he becomes fat and chubby and suddenly he becomes so fat he cannot even walk. He may not grow tall enough. If there's not enough calcium in his food, he cannot grow taller. So right kind of food, appropriate food is needed. And for the sp spiritual growth, therefore, what we need, what kind of food we need? First Peter chapter 2, verse 1 to 3 says like this. First Peter chapter 2, verse 1 one, two, three says like that. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and the evil speaking, as newborn babes, desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. What he says is, as newborn babes, desire pure milk of the word. The word of God, he calls pure milk. As newborn babes, yes, when you're born again, you, begin to, you must begin to grow in the, spirit, in the spiritual realm. And you have to go spiritually, you have to grow. And what can grow you is the word of God. And you have to take it. Babies cannot take solid food. Similarly, when we are born again in the beginning, we begin to take little this lesson, that lesson, small lessons in a small place. People begin to give you and you grow in that. That's what he says. But before that, what he says is, newborn babes. But newborn babes will not have malice or malicious nature. Or they will not be deceitful. And also they will not be hypocrite. They don't know how to be hypocrite. Envy and all evil speaking, newborns cannot have. So what he says, like the newborn babes, do not have these things, to, but to grow stronger, take the word, the pure milk. But further when we go, what St. Paul says, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as, a, as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. Paul says to the Corinthian church, I could not speak to you like I could have spoken to spiritual people. Now, right now I'm speaking to spiritual people who are born again, who are grown, grown in the Lord. But, that's, but it's, this was also a church. But Paul says this, and verse 2 he says, I fed you with milk and not with solid food. For until now you were not able to receive it, and even now you are still not able. And verse 3 he says, For you are still carnal, for where there is envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men. The time you begin to live carnal life, when you do not manifest the fruit of the Spirit in you, that means you are still living carnal life and you are like babes or ch like children in the Lord and you are not grown up and you are not ready to take the solid food. You cannot even if you give you you will not take it. That's what he says. While you're hearing this, you must think, am I taking solid food? 
And if you say to yourself, yes, I'm taking solid food, but if you find these kind of things in you, what he said, for you're still carnal, for where there is envy, you know what is envy? All of us have some amount of envy in us. Some amount of envy in some certain area. It's very simple. Somebody has it, I wish I have it. Oh, he has it, I don't have it. That's envy. And strife. Pastor Dennis would have sp- spoken to you sometime about strife. No, Pastor and Sister Bina, I think. Miss Sister Bina spoke. Both of you? Praise God. Strife. And divisions. Divisions. You know what? What is division is? If we all cannot come to one single agreement on the things that we do in the house of the Lord. Maybe within your own family or within the church, your thought patterns are different from other. We can have different thought patterns, but we have said, we will say yes. Like as pastors, we say, we'll do this. For example, Pastor Dennis told you, let us go for this GLS summit or Global Leaders Summit. Then you should say, Pastor says that must be good. Let us do it. Isn't it simple? Do we have to push you, you know, tell you many times and so on? The only thing that you should not, should stop you is if you don't have money, you can't go, go for that. And as pastors, we've been talking and the, the leaders, how to help the church so that they can be blessed. So what means is the thought pattern that has been, that is being brought forward to you from the pulpit, you should align yourself with it. Because everything that is being taught to you is from the word of God. Isn't it? So you must say yes to that. All of us must have the same way of thinking. I can say one more example. Don't get offended. I say this and I will say it until I see the change. Is it too difficult for us to reach here at 8 o'clock? I'm asking this, and when I ask it, I can be angry in my heart. I can, and I will be. And I have a right to do that. When I'm a pastor, I can ask this question. Is it too difficult for you to reach here at 8 o'clock? When in charge of church, people are able to reach at 6 in the morning? I'm not talking about those, you know, only those bachelors who are coming from their camps uh, because there's a bus, they're coming. I'm talking the families who have got babies in their hands. They're coming to the church six in the morning. I'm not able to see the change in this church here, Abu Dhabi church. Can't I ask this? How can you say that you are together, you're going forward in one line? What is that that's stopping you? Is it not negligence? Is it not negligence? Think about it. What kind of respect you have for your Father in heaven when Tina was leading us to offer thanks to Him because what He has done for us. What are you doing for the Lord? And still you expect blessings from Him? Think about it. I won't be afraid to speak like this. If I don't say this, who will say this to you? As a shepherd, I'm just getting this thought. A shepherd can take the sheep where there is green pastures. He will go and see if there is any thorns and thistles so that they they should not get hurt. All these things he can do. Yet one thing he cannot do. He cannot make those sheep to eat the grass which is there. Do you understand that? And he cannot make them to drink the still waters. They don't want to drink even if he takes them to the still waters. Cannot. He can only take you there. And going forward. And the word of God says, Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God and you have come to need milk and not solid food. 
He's talking to the church. If you have been listening to the word, word of God, maybe some of you only just one year, some of you are listening to the word of God, maybe two, three, four, and ten, or twelve, or fifteen, twenty years, some of you are listening to the word of God, still you are sitting. If someone can come and ask you some question, oh, let's go and ask the pastor. That's what you're doing. What he's saying is, by this time, you should be able to teach the word of God to others, but until now, you need someone to come and share the word to you, explain things to you. What kind of spiritual growth you have is asking to the Hebrew church. We all need to teach the word of God to somebody. Don't think you will keep coming to church and sit here uh, uh, of teachings and preachings year, week after week and then just go back, forget or use it or whatever and do nothing for the kingdom. Don't think that you'll be counted as grown-up people in the spirit. Think about it. You need to be teaching. You need to be teaching. That does not mean you need a classroom all the time or you need to come to this pulpit and preach here. It's not that way. You can teach. Most of the times I have taught was to single people either in my house, outside, somewhere. I began my ministry right here in Abu Dhabi. 23 years ago. Whenever I had an opportunity, from the very day I was baptized in the spirit, I was ready to preach the word. I was ready to teach the word. The word became alive to me. The first thing that happened to me after I received the baptism in the Holy Spirit was I began to understand the scriptures. The first message, I wrote it for myself. This is on, the, on, on Holy Spirit, which I still teach the same. It was exactly how it came to me, just from the spirit of God. Are you growing? I'm bringing this challenge to you because this is the end, the last month, end of the year, that you will have an opportunity to do something so that will triumphantly will enter the new year in special way as a grown-up person into the next year. That's what he says. Now let me read this further. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. Still you are drinking milk. By this time you should be teaching the word, preaching the word. You should have gone to others. You are still drinking milk. Verse 13. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. For he's a babe. You can't keep drinking milk all the time. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That is those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. If you are grown up, you have, ex you, you have exercised your senses in such a way. You will understand what is right and what is wrong. Not according to the world system, but according to the spiritual standards. Which is right thing? <clears throat> what should I do? What is the right way of speaking? And what I should do for the kingdom of God? What is my purpose in the kingdom of God? Because God has chosen me already. Like everybody checks. Parents check the growth of their children. God checks our growth. I want to give an example. Book of Daniel ch chapter 5 talks about King Belshazzar. And that is the king when he was drinking and eating and marrying with his queens and others, so many other people bringing the golden uh, vessels of the temple and he was defiling them. God saw from heaven and he sends a hand onto the wall and begins to write. And something was written. And verse 24, 25 talks about what was written. It says, Mene, mene, tekel, ufasim. And verse 26, what is the meaning of this? This is the interpretation of the word. Mene means God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. God numbers our work. He measures our work. And then it says, Mene, God has numbered your, king, uh, uh, numbered your kingdom and finished it. And tekel, 
you have been weighed in the balances and found wanting. God will put us in the balance sometimes checking where we stand before him. He checks. I want to give you another example. Luke chapter 13, verse 6 to 9, there's a story here. There's a parable Jesus has spoken. And I'll read it for you quickly. He also spoke this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. And verse 7, then he said to the keeper of his vineyard, Look, for three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why does it use up the ground? But he answered and said to him, Sir, let it alone this year also until I dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit, well. But if not, after that you can cut it down. You know, this picture is very clear. Why did Jesus f f spoke this parable? He's telling, God will come to check fruit in us. And when he comes, and he came every year, three years, a long time, no fruit. God commands, cut it down. But there comes our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is our intercessor, says, Father, give me some more time. We are in the time of grace right now. Not only for us, for the whole world. Jesus saying, Father, wait some more time. Maybe one more year, many people will turn to me. They'll come back to me. They'll bear fruit. God comes to check fruit in our life. God comes to check growth in our spiritual life. We cannot be the same always. There got to be some growth. Growth must be there in our spiritual life. That's what the word of God is talking to us. And when it checks... But he doesn't find. He'll cut it off. This further, one more verse. Let's see. Uh, John chapter 15, verse 1 and 2. We know it very well. I am the true wine, and my father is the wine dresser. Verse 2. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, it takes away. If you are the branch that does not bear fruit, he will take it away. That's why I said, out of 100 students, only 25 remained in the Bible school. And they completed it. What if this is the ratio in the church? It can be sometimes. Because the fruit, the branches that does not bear fruit will be taken away, cut off. Same book, John chapter 15, 7, 8 says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciple. The thing here is, Father want to be glorified when we bear much fruit. He's interested in our, in our bearing fruit so that he'll be glorified. Father is looking for his glory and he wants to see the glory in us. In our growth, when my son and my daughter, they come up, they study well, they, they get good jobs, they're doing very well, their behavior is good, when they are blessed, you know, I will glory in it as a father. Don't you? Our father in heaven wants to see that fruit, he wants to see that growth in us so that he can glory in us. That's why he's seeking growth, spiritual growth. I'll take you quickly. The only way for us to understand our growth is, we read that verse today, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, for the communion. The 20th verse says like this, But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink the cup. Examining ourselves, our spiritual growth, we ourselves must examine. I'll tell you some more thing in this verse. verse. Look at verse 31. For if we, would, if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. If you examine yourself and judge yourself, you will not be judged. Father doesn't need to see how you're grown. Growth is known to you and it's evident and everyone knows about it. And verse 32. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. I want you to get some meaning here. There is some solid meaning. Try to get this. But when you, we are judged, because we, judge, we did not judge ourselves, when the Father judges us and when he found us not right with him, what happens? Then he chastens us. 
some people don't like to hear the word God punishing us. How many of you know that? God, the word chastening is very close to punishment. It's a little bit different though. But a father tries to spank his son, he doesn't do it that he should, this, he should be uh, hurt and he should have you know, problem, he should have pain. He does it in a reason so that his son will understand the thing that he has done is wrong and that's why father is spanking him so that he will change from that and become better. That is chastening. Punishing is that expecting you to be troubled. When you're put in a prison, we are punished. So that they expect you to be troubled, they put hard labor and all kind of stuff in the prison so that after, because of the punishment, that you may be okay. Maybe okay, may not be. But chastening is making you understand. A father does that. Some people don't like to hear these words. When we are going in the wrong way, God does hinder us. He does, will not allow us to go forward. He may stop you, you may chasten you, he may correct you, he will do these things for us. But if you judge yourself before God judges you, that's why the word of God has been given to us to judge continually ourselves. That's the reason we have the communion month after month. If possible, if we had it every week, it would have been much better. We could check ourselves. We could examine ourselves. We could understand the condition, our spiritual condition, whether we are living a righteous life according to the will of the Father or not. It would have been good. That's the reason this has been given to us. If you judge yourself, you'll not be condemned. Means, if you want to know whether spiritually grown or not, check, take some parameters. I'll tell you a few things, then you'll understand that. Quickly, I'm take, taking you. What are the things that you want to check about? God will come to check the fruit. What kind of fruit is that? We know, fruit of the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. We know it very well. I'm not going to go on details on that. You read for yourself. So check. I want to take this list in your heart right now. Fruit of the Spirit. What kind of the fruit of the Spirit is manifesting you? You may not have all the spiritual gifts, but you're expected to have all the components of the fruit of the Spirit. All nine of them. When it comes to spiritual gifts, Holy Spirit will give you what He wants to give you. And you can ask. Paul also suggests that we can ask the best gifts. And then, check about your fruits, how you are manifesting the fruit of the Spirit in yourself. You can understand, it's very easy. Husbands, ask your wives. They'll tell you whether you have all those things in, your, in the fruit of your life. And wives, likewise, ask your husbands. And both husband, wife, fathers and mothers ask your children. They will tell you, where do you wrong, go wrong? But of course for children, we have no choice but by heart way. You are doing this wrong, we will do them. We do it already whether they ask us or not. We always do it. In a family, this is enough, just enough. Husband, wife must share. And as many times it happens like this. When wife tells, hey, you are doing this thing is wrong. A husband immediately gets mad. I don't know, what, what do you think I'm doing? Right? He will try to justify. The moment you justify, you'll never be corrected. Husbands, I tell you, when wives tell you something, correcting, don't get offended. Think about it. Just give it thought. Don't reply quickly. After giving a thought, if she really did something, say wrong, which is not right, maybe her understanding was wrong, share and explain. The, if you defend yourself, you'll never be corrected. If you accept, okay, this area, okay. Why did you speak so angrily to that person? Oh, but that person did this wrong. But wife, said, wife is standing next to you. The way you'd have spoken would have been so hurting to the person which your own wife understood. And how much more that person would have been hurt. Maybe my wife will tell me, why were you so angry because people are coming late? But I had to do that. <laughs> you understand? It's very important. Same, similarly, when husbands tell wives, you must think, take counsel, share with her. I think, I'll tell you, it can never be uh, better than having, you know, 
close understanding with each other, husbands and wives, and sharing. And see, we can become angry. We can say certain things angrily. But take some time afterwards. Try to explain why you are angry. And things will be settled. Families will be built better way. Okay. Next thing. If you want to check your growth, check about the fruit of the spirit. And next thing is faith. When was it you took a faith step? Many people say we are living by faith. You know, we are living by faith. We are living, we believe in God. We have faith in God. We are having faith in God. That's why we bring our tithes. Is there a time when you had a real need? Like Brother Gilbert shared this testimony today. He said, he put God to test. Lord, you have to do something with my health now. Did you do something like this? Waited until God has intervened in healing you or you had a need, maybe financial need or a sickness need or some job need and you, did you ask God only and waited for him to answer before you went and asked somebody else for the help? Did you do it? Where is your faith? You need to grow in faith. God gave us a measure of faith, the word of God says, but it cannot remain in the same measure. And Jesus, when he said, when it's, your faith is like the mustard seed, in other words, he says, this much faith can do this big if you have more faith, how big are things you can do. That's what he said. So mustard seed means small faith and big faith. There is a measure of faith. So what kind of measure of faith that you have? Think about it. Measure it. And, and thirdly, what kind of service you're doing in the kingdom? Service includes worship and praise. And service includes something to do in the church. Yes, when, when we come here, the chairs are here and there. We want to be set. Every single person puts, do something in this church on a Friday evening. That's a service. Some are doing a lot of work here. And some are even, don't bother. When they come, everything is ready. They come and sit, enjoy, worship the Lord. And before anybody goes, they're gone. That's what you're doing. How can you say you are doing a better service than last time? Is there a growth in you? Think about it. Pastor Dennis had to come and set up the drums here for so many years. And I was watching. I said, there should be some youth that should come and take part. Thank God. Now there are, his son is grown up and few other young children are taking care of. Thank God for that. Yes, everybody can put a hand, make things happen in the kingdom of God. It begins in your own house and begins in the church. That's a growth service. What, how much you've grown in the service. You, nobody has to tell you what to do in the church. You should find a work for yourself. Nobody has to come and tell, brother, can you do this? Many people say, nobody told us. Further. How about your prayer life? Five years ago, you started, out, started with 10 minutes of prayer. And is it still 10 minutes? Or one year ago, you started with 15 minutes of prayer, is it still 15 minutes or there's any growth in your prayer life? You can measure yourself your growth. If your prayer increased, you'll be able to pray more times. Like Tina said, seven times David was able to praise God in a day. Daniel prayed three times. David being a king or an emperor, he had time to pray to God and praise him. Probably he took his, 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 uh, uh, what is that? Harp, harp, and began to pray. Maybe he was, in sit, he was sitting in his throne and suddenly he remembers, I have to praise God. You all sit, I'll go. He go to his room, took harp, Lord, I worship you, I praise you, oh my God. That's what he would have done seven times to do that. He would have done at least five times while he's in office. Next, our walk with God. Pastor Dennis gave us a beautiful message to us last week. It is on the on the media, you can see it. Maybe he has done it here also. Walking with God. We are all are expected. It's not only written for Enoch to walk with God. We all need to walk with God. And I was, when he said, you know, because I walk with God, I look the same all the time. And I felt, I took it seriously. Yes, when you walk with God, you will not grow old. It's not about always looking, but then. There is something that happens within you when you walk with God. Is there any growth in walking with God? Walking in the spirit is walking with God. Sorry. Furthermore, our obedience. How are you with your obedience with God? 
Are you obeying? Did you ever say to God, God, whatever you say, I'll obey? Did you ever say to him? And when you said, did you do it? Sometimes you must have said, I will obey God. But are you actually obeying God when he's telling you in your spirit? The word of God says, do not be hearers of, of God's word only, but be doers of the word of God. That is obedience. And further, our giving. Many of you may be very good in your giving, but it should grow. Some people are very careful. They give measured giving. They give. They can't go beyond. Try doing those things beyond, not in your measurements. Let's go further. Our love, our love must increase towards everybody, within our own family members and the church members. Our love should increase. And when it comes to diligence, Diligence means being very diligent to do the things of God. The word of God says, in, I think in uh, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, those who diligently seek him, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Diligence is a very special word. How diligent are you when you are reaching out to God, seeking his presence? How much you're putting effort to hear the voice of God? You can't hear the voice of God just like that. Some of you will say, I don't hear God. Yes, many of you will say that because you are not diligent enough. I will tell you straight forward. You are not diligent enough to hear the voice of God. That's why you don't hear him. God speaks to everybody. It does not make any difference. He speaks to everybody through something, through the word, through spirit, through dreams and visions. In some way, God is speaking to us. Are you diligent? Are you waiting for God to speak to you? If there's any increase in your growth in diligence when it comes to diligence... When it comes to seeking Him, is there any growth? Are you actually seeking Him? The Word of God, seek His face every day in the morning, early in the morning, seek His face that He may impart His will into your life. There can be many other things. What can we do then? If we are not seeing any growth in us, there are few things that you can do. You can take a fast. End of this month, maybe you can begin it tomorrow. Say, Lord, until the end of this here, I'll fast every day until I set myself right with you. Increase your prayer time tomorrow. From today onwards, you may have to take some decisions right now. Fasting is the best thing to do. When you are not, you, when you have convinced and convicted this evening through this message that you have to, be, you have to change, then do it now. <coughs> humble yourself before God. The word of God says, humble under the mighty hand of God and will exalt you in the due time. Humility before God is extremely important, brothers and sisters. Many people do not do it. I can't preach about humility a lot right now. But then, other thing is, search for yourself. And find out if there are any shortcomings in your life. Search every day. The best practice would be, every night before you go to bed, take a few minutes. What did I do today? What did I speak today? What did I see today? What did I hear today? Is anything that did, I did is not right before God? Settle your account every day. And the only best and the final thing that I would like to say is submit to God completely. The saved name. I just briefly went very fast without explaining a lot of things, but I want to tell you, how is your spiritual growth today? If you have realized you do not have enough spiritual growth, what are you going to do today now? What kind of decision that you're going to take now? Not another day. What you want to do so that you can grow spiritually. Those who do not grow, see those who do not go forward, they are left behind. They are not static. Actually going behind. Because if this hand of mine is going, we are both going together and this one is going, this stops. What happens is we are actually going behind. Even though you don't walk behind, you have gone behind. 
So you cannot take a chance today. This is the best example that we have. 100 people started, 25 people finished. There is a problem in the kingdom. Brothers and sisters, this evening, you may have to make some solid decisions for your spiritual growth. You can't keep drinking milk. You have to become teachers of the word, every one of you. Do those things that you are not able to do. When I talked about coming in time to the church, it is a serious matter. Cannot take God lightly. For me, it's very difficult to do that. I'm telling you, nobody has told me it's not possible. To become late in the presence of God is very difficult for me. Because I feel I'm doing something very wrong thing. I'm stealing something. I'm doing something very wrong. And this was there from many, many years. Even when I was not very serious with the Lord. Just think about Daniel. Why he did not eat the food of the king. Think about what kind of zeal he had. Think about David. Why he was able to go and face Goliath in that young age, even though he was not trained in the war. He knew his God. Do you know your God? Do you love your God? Really love him? Or you just come and worship him, raise your hands and worship as if you are loving him? Think about it. You may be hypocrite in the presence of God. If you really love him, you'll run to his presence. You'll run to him every time. Yes, waking up in the morning is a difficult thing. But because you love him, you want to do that sacrifice. I did this preaching in Dubai. It's on in the net also. Giving, offering your bodies as a living sacrifice. It's a reasonable service. Just watch it if you can. Take it. Watch it. That will give you. And add that to this, you'll be blessed. I wanted to do that here, but I couldn't because I can't. What God gives me, a new thing, I have to I release that to you. Can we close our eyes this morning, evening? Thank you, Jesus. I want to give you opportunity to make some solid decisions. And Holy Spirit is here to help you to walk in the things that you are decided today. You need an anointing to come upon you and touch you and strengthen you to follow your decisions. I can't force you. Neither Holy Spirit forces you. It is your free will that God is looking for. God sent this message that you'll be able to enter this new year in a special way. God will give a special promise to yourself when you're grown, when you have walking with him. For you, you will have your own individual promise from the Lord. You don't have to wait for the promise coming and which is being declared for you on the 31st night. This personal promise which you can hold on to and walk in it. Do you want to make some decision tonight? Lord, I want to grow spiritually. I don't want to be baby anymore. I don't want to be a toddler anymore. I don't want to be like a small child running. I want to be a grown up man. I want to be a teacher of the world. I want to be a follower of the world. I want to live by your word. Is there anyone in this place who want to say that this evening? Something must change in your life. Change is needed. That includes discipline, service, coming in time, worshipping God, waking up in the morning. All these things are needed. Are you able to make decisions in those areas? If someone is there, you may stand up, stand up wherever you are. We'll pray and release the anointing to touch you. Thank you, Jesus. Let's be quick and surrender ourselves. 
It's only talking about submission to God and willing to grow. I'm willing to grow. I'm willing to grow. Lord, I want to grow. I want to grow. I want to make those solid decisions, Father. If you've grown already, you have to go further. Further. Everyone. There is a chance to grow for everybody. There is not a person who can say, I've grown now. I don't need anything. Unless you don't want to. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The presence of God is here. The Spirit of God is moving in this place. And as you lift your hands to Him, say, I surrender, Lord. I want to grow. I'm just going to pray and finish this meeting right away. But then it is between you and your Father in heaven who will go, who's going to lift you up, who's going to en- uh, uh, en- encompass you with His love and say, my son, I'm going to hold you. I'm going to walk with you. If you're willing to walk with me, I will walk with you. You don't have to worry. That's what the Lord says. When you bear much fruit, He will be glorified and He wants to see that fruit in you today. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. For some of you, the Lord says, I've seen your heart. I know you have taken this decision. I will bless you and I will lift you up. He says to some people here right now. Because you had a strong conviction in your heart. For the Spirit of God is moving. It's touching you wherever you are. And I release this anointing for you to walk and grow. And you'll have a testimony even by the end of this year. With what, with, by what has happened to you in these three weeks. You will share those things that what God has done you. In these three weeks, your growth, you will express. You don't have to say, I had increments, I had finance, I have this. You will say, I have grown spiritually even at the end of the year. Because God has given me that grace that empowered me to grow. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Lord, I commit my brothers and sisters into your presence, Lord, that they have a will. They have a desire to grow, Master God, spiritually. Yes, Lord, they want to come up to the level that you want them to come up, Father God. Lord, I pray that you will send your spirit abundantly upon them every day, every morning, every time they seek you, Father God. Release the spirit upon them. Let there be transformation in them, Father God. Let there be newness in them, Father God. Let there be the spiritual strength, Father Father God, that they will begin to know something is happening day after day, day after day, Father God. And they will see that spiritual growth has begun in them. And even by the end of the year, Lord, they will have a testimony to tell, oh, this is the area God has transformed me, changed me. Here I am. Lord, I thank you for your presence. I thank you for anointing, Father God. Pour out your spirit upon your children, Lord. They will go with that something newness to grow powerfully in you, Father God. Thank you for answering our prayer. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' most precious name we pray, Lord.